Professor Thomas, who was the first uh, professor of natural sciences, he uh, created his own teaching garden um, down Anzac Avenue. When, when Thomas retired, the university, um, not long after that in the 1920s, built the, the old arts building, and of course that building was designed by Roy Lippincott, and he engaged Thomas Lancaster, who was then one of the, the early, um, he was a botanist um, who worked under Thomas. It was the second sort of generation of teachers. Well, the site was originally uh, selected for old government house in 1840s. Uh, the garden was started to be laid out in 1845 and uh, the oaks, which is very important to the gardens, were planted between 80, 1842 to 1844. And then they started to do the planting of all the other commemorative trees around the site. Government House, um, we were standing, was the site for a continuum occupation um, by governors. And uh, of course gardeners that, that were employed by the governor. There's an unbroken line from 1840 in the archaeological excavation, we, we could see um, the old levels and in fact we could even see the, uh, the burnt fabric from the first government house. The, the, other, the other changes of course have, have been the, the planting uh, in old government house. The university has maintained the old, older planting. There are some significant historic trees uh, planted um, by particularly the royal, probably the most famous um, Prince Alfred, um, planted a number of trees that are still growing here today. Um, and of course the trees age, the, the, the early planting was a canopy of oak and pine and, and m many of the pines have died their natural cycle, have been replaced by contemporary planting. The rose garden was established around the 1950s, the, uh, the pathways was put in 1954 onwards and the rose garden was established afterwards and it's a very beautiful rose garden. We really try to work environmentally friendly in the garden. We use, make use of minimum of poisons. We try to compost everything. Every time we prune a tree or an oak or any other tree or a tree would die, we chip it down and we mulch it back into the ground. At the moment, we got on our database over 8,200 plants identified, which we keep up to date. It's a full-time job. Each time we plant a plant and we label the plants, It's also very important for us because the first impressions when a new student comes to university is the environment they come into and therefore it's also very important for us to create a green environment, a place of relaxation. We've been working with the ground staff to have a look at this question of carbon sequestration and it's been a very useful, very interesting partnership and so we're able to actually make use of all this information and starting to put together a bigger picture of what a property like this is. It's not just a place with pretty plants and a nice place to sit and have your lunch. It's just an extra added uh, bonus to the campus. I mean, we're lucky we're here, just get here any time of day. But it serves as a reminder that we also need these green spaces. So I think what the university is doing and how well it's being maintained is just wonderful. They've got a history of each and every garden and worked in this garden since it started and I'm just one in a long line and I try to give it back in the same or better than I received it. Yeah, this is a place to make memories and, and, and spend the best part of your life and doing the best you can.